So we are back uh, to Chosin Rehab. Um, I would say it's the best and the number one rehab center here in Accra, Ghana. So in case you have a family member, you have a friend who is into any addiction, you want a place to rehabilitate that person, then I recommend Chosin Rehab, located inside um, Achimota Abufu, um, close to the GH Media School. Just ask of um, Chosin Rehab and you'll be directed here. Um, I have um, a friend here. He's been a friend here at Chosin Rehab. Uh, he's always having fun. <laughs> Charlie, what's up? Uh, everything cool, boss man. Okay, so your name? The name is Orua Daniel Kofibua Tinsapu. Orua Daniel Kofibua Tinsapu. Yes, uh, where are you from here in Ghana? Ah, that's a very deep question. I would have to centralize on Ashanti region, but I have uh, lineage from the northern region and also, uh, yes, I think northern region, Ashanti region, basically Ashanti region, but my grandmother is from the north. I have not started the interview, but you sound so intelligent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what, what, is your, what is the level of your edu education? My actual certification ends at the first degree with a professional program from Ghana Stock Exchange. But I tried. I tried to do my master's in business administration once. I, I wasn't successful. So it's Why okay. were you not successful? Because of drug abuse. Okay. So um, at what age did you start using drugs? Do you remember? Um, 2010. I think I was 23. Okay. Yeah. Who introduced you to drugs? Okay, that would be... I would say illicit drugs. It's alcohol and illicit drugs because I did alcohol before 2010. Okay. Okay. So after that, what what's next? 2010 came in the marijuana, the the one that became the issue to start with. Okay, that's 2010. Yes. And you started with marijuana. Yes, please. Okay. So who introduced you to that, or you you wanted to explore or what? Um. How was it like? Okay. So. After senior high school, which I, I believe I completed in 2005, yes. You 2005. believe you completed? Oh, you're not too sure. Sometimes you. I don't have the, <laughs> the, the, the right timeline of it, but yes, 2005, I, I was down with Presbyterian Boys Secondary School, Legon. Legon? Yes. Hey, Presec, what that year? Yes, please. Hey, <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, um, during school and someone introduced you to that? Uh -huh. So. I, I think most people are very much aware that in Ghana, per se, in Accra is one of the schools that smoke a lot of marijuana. Oh, are you serious? Oh, yes. Even in as much, <laughs> even in as much as some people would like to hide it. I mean, maybe now it's different, but nowadays, I say Accra has a per se and Accra Academy talking. Schools that smoke a lot. That's what I thought. In Accra, that is. Yeah. That is I don't know who, who did this research. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we are claimed ourselves to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not sure past students of um, Presec will be happy with you. I, I, I know. <laughs> they, will, they will try and chastise me, but most of them know the truth about this reality. We, we had a ghetto on campus. Hey. Uh, yeah, on, heading out heading out to the school towards Medina. Atomic? But, yes. The, the junction. That, exactly. The route that led through the back there was a route a yes but now it's been fenced yeah, exactly. those yeah. time it was not fenced so you can just yeah and you guys had a ghetto there was a ghetto on campus i don't know who had created it we came to meet it and you also joined i didn't do it then i used to go there but i didn't do it then so who introduced you to your first marijuana that was in uk and it, i was introduced after by school yes that was or was it on you were on vacation yeah i was almost done with my first degree Okay. 2010. Okay, so let me understand. At Presec, you didn't smoke? No, but the peer pressure began from there. Okay, but you never tried any of them? No. So, after school, yeah. when you started your first degree, yeah. you traveled yes. to the UK? Yes, please. And there, what happened? Okay, so, before I left for the UK, I had a... Uh, I have to be honest about it. It's quite emotional, but I had a book in that. I'm being as truthful as I can. So I had a book in that. <laughs> I had a book in that. I had a book in that I had called for. Um, a lady my, here in Ghana. Yes, my 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 university wife. <laughs> <laughs> you were so much in love with her. Yes, yes, I and was. And she left you. Uh, she didn't actually leave me, but she cheated on me, and I found out. How 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 were you able to find out she she was cheating on you? <laughs> you caught her. 
I, I did a detective work. I did a detective work by myself. Nobody gave me a hint or nothing. I just, I just felt it. Yeah. How was the feeling like? Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's like you are not telling me something. How are you able to fish out to know that this lady is cheating on me? I think that's one of the skills I'm trying to nurture even now. I realize I have detective skills. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you find out that your lady was cheating on you. Yes. You did you approach her? Oh yes. Uh, immediately I had the suspicion the week the week after. The weekend as you say after is when I tracked her down. And then I I I, I made her find herself in a corner where she had to just go confess that, and yeah. So you were broken hearted. Yes, so I was broken hearted before I'll be done with my final uh, final semester. No. That was my first semester in fourth year. Okay. Which, Which university? university? Central University College. Okay. Matariko. Okay. Matariko. Uh, at that time we were at Matariko. Yeah. Yeah. So before I'll be done with my first semester, let me recall this right. I think it was third year. Third year. Third year. Before in the university. Start third year is when before I you started your level 400. Mm. You see, this is what I mean by the timeline don't always come right. So I think third year yes third year okay third year ending when when we were ending third year is when i caught it okay and so it was first year i mean yeah first semester fourth year when i left for that was my internship semester at so, that time our four, first semester for uh, fourth year was for internship yes so that was what i used to go to uk and so i had found i had caught uh, third year ending of third year i left for uk first semester fourth year i still had a book hand hand to me so in you 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 left ghana very sad i and wouldn't say that i wouldn't say you that. were in pain leaving ghana to somewhat i had to realize when i was in uk because i, I like i said when we when we were done in third year you see you see now this confirms my timelines have to be rechecked I think it was second year ending that I actually caught her. So I tried to forgive her. We did the whole third year, me trying to forgive her. And it still didn't work. So I had to break up with her. Okay. Uh -huh. So I broke up with her before I left for UK. So when you left for UK, what happened? Now, when I left for UK, so I was supposed to be the happiest man because I felt like I had relieved myself yeah. from every, every tie. You've every changed year. environments. Uh -huh. But strangely found myself in a happy land and a developed land where there was party all over. I was not supposed to be working, but I chose to work. I was making some cool money. I was getting what I wanted to get, going to the nightclubs. I was supposed to be happy, I wasn't. So I realized I was still booking at it. And then it dawned on me, what do I do whilst I'm here to solve it before I go back home? Because I'm coming back as a bugger. I don't want to come back sad. Yeah. How would that make sense to anyone? So I was thinking about it, thinking about it. The one uh, senior, I would say, uh, friend. He's a elderly friend. Maybe I don't know. I don't know your age, but you look young too much. Yeah. But I wouldn't know. So <laughs> yeah, he, he he looked young at the time as well. Okay. But it turns out after I got to know him, he was much older than me. So he, 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 he advised that he had a friend because I told him about my issue and he said he had a, a, a worker, a white boy. He, he was a Ghanaian. The man I'm referring to was a Ghanaian. He was a chef. At the, In a restaurant. A, a, a restaurant uh, that was sitting on top of a nightclub called Roxy Nightclub. So okay. any, anybody who knows about the Western London knows about Roxy Nightclub. It was in the basement. Okay. And the man was the chef of the restaurant. That's his opponent. But okay. I forgot the name of the restaurant. So, yeah. His name is Joss. His nickname is Joss. I'll leave it at that. So, Joss, Joss told me one of his white workers is a very cool guy. I could talk to him and he might be able to lift it off of me and he, he turned out to be called bob okay <laughs> i sometimes think of him as my white bob Nesta Mali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't have any contact with him as of now we ended it that same day the same day that i got introduced to him the same day he introduced me to marijuana the same day we went into the nightclub for the first time the same day he got envious of me the same day he was like 
I see you later, and that was it. I never saw him again. So after that, you wanted to still continue with marijuana? Yeah, coming back to Ghana, because there I didn't get any more opportunities after I had that experience with Bob. I didn't have any more opportunities. I would have to contact him, go find him. But like I said, it wasn't a good night for him, even though it was for me. So, yeah, I advised myself, okay, so marijuana seems to be a cool thing. I might, I might uh, get more into it when I come down, because I have friends from Pusek who had tried to get me into it. I was like, no. I had friends from my neighborhood who tried to get me into it. I was like, no. So, like, uh, I just had to finish my time. You could come down and now come and explore marijuana. Yeah. So finally, you came to Ghana. Yeah. And, and you decided to explore. Yeah. 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 And I did. Uh, I, I, yeah, to be frank now, to remember, I had a senior also, but he was my mate in school. He was a senior in terms of when he completed senior high school. He had lived in the UK, come back. So in Central, he was my mate. But yes, he was my senior. His nickname is Karanji. Those who know him should know him as that Karanji. And Karanji, when I came down, now became the one out. Resort to or uh, got more advice about marijuana from me. He told me it's not to be abused. If I have gone to learn it, because he had also tried before I left and I didn't do it. So he said, now if I'm ready, then I, it's not to be abused. I have to do it very minimally. It was about that, and I didn't take the advice when I decided to abuse. So yeah. So after getting that orientation, you started. But yeah. you didn't go by the advice he gave you. Initially, I did. But the excitement alone, when you take it? Uh, it wasn't about excitement. The abuse came in when, when I made a move with, with God. I, I made a move with God, and it became a conflicting move with my family. OK. Yeah, and then my family decided to cast me away. My dad and mom, I'll have to say. Even though I'm not saying they are doing that now, because now I'm grateful they brought me here, finally to try and solve it all. I believe that's why I'm here. You see, in their minds, I was, I was, I have been introduced to something. I am abusing it. My dad had to confess to me that in his mind, he knew, he had suspected me of doing it for a while, but he didn't confront me, which was something I embraced. Okay, okay so yeah. for marijuana, what was the next thing? You yes, so that is a cigarette. Cigarettes came in 2015. Okay. So from 2010, the, the battle of, with cycles and other things, uh, I, may, I may not even want to talk about them, them but yeah, it continued from 2010. No, no, it started from 2012. When I started smoking 2010, 2012, I began having cycle issues. 2015, I, I, I found myself in Canada trying to do my master's program. Okay, in Canada? Yes, please. Yeah, in British Columbia, to be precise, okay. Nanaimo, okay. Nanaimo City, uh, Vancouver Island University. Okay. Yeah. And that was when you started cooking? No, I've never tried cooking. <laughs> so which one did you try? Was it just yeah, the other drug? hard drug that came in as, after the cigarette was crystal meth. Crystal? Yes, please. What is that? Crystal methamphetamine. And what is that? What does it do? Uh, it is... Mm, <laughs> Compared to cocaine, most people, even if you go online and Google crystal meth versus cocaine, you see the breakdown. So what does it do when you take the crystal? What does it do to you? It has a, a, a wilder dopamine rush than marijuana. Okay. Yeah, a very wild dopamine rush. Do you feel dizzy? No, you feel very focused. V very aggressive? No, but very strong. Do you take it with bunker or how is it done? It has a special pipe, which is similar to the test tubes in the laboratory, science laboratory. Okay. They actually blow it from the test tubes in the laboratories, I, I believe. Uh, yeah, I would say, yeah. And is it common here in Ghana? No, I have not seen any since I've been back. Okay, so this is what you were doing outside. And how did it affect you health-wise? Yeah, so it actually came in when I found myself homeless. When when things went bizarre for me, when 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 I couldn't take care of my rent anymore, I was living in my car, and then I got introduced to a gang. 
and they in, they can, in Canada. Canada. Yes, please. A street gang, a street gang. Yeah, I I don't want to disclose too many names. Some of them are pretty popular, and yeah, but in Ghana or there in their city. Okay, and you joined them. Yes, I were, were you committing crimes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 what am I supposed to say? I was aiding and abetting. You were part of the criminals. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you were brought here back to Ghana. Who brought you? No, back? I came. I came. I came by myself. I came by myself, but with the support of my senior brother. Okay. The family was, they were not happy about No, my dad wasn't picking my calls. My mom had finally decided to pick my calls before I returned, but she wasn't ready to support me financially. She said if she made the move, my dad was getting angry. She wasn't trying to get in the way of what my dad had told her to do. It was only my senior brother that came in to sort me out, to get my ticket for me to come. My passport was missing at the time. I had to get an emergency travel certificate. So, how long have you been in Ghana? Since 2017, May. And you came back, you were still not stable? No, I came back clinically depressed. What do you mean by clinically depressed? Yeah, yeah, that, that is what is actual depression. So many people use the word depression, and I find them lacking the actual knowledge of what depression really is. So sometimes we classify it, because that's what we were told, as clinical depression. Then you know it is not just getting a booking heart or similar to things like that it is it is it is hopelessness actual hopelessness yeah, i don't know i don't know well i find people on the streets in ghana i found, I found people on the streets in canada I, don't, I didn't find many of them hopeless the, the situation i found myself in is actual clinical depression they tried to heal me the psych ward the nanaimo regional general hospital psych ward tried to heal me but I was only moved from one point to the other, and I was still hopeless. How do you feel now? Oh, right now, there, I'm, I'm really cool. <laughs> How long have you been here at the rehab? I've been in chosen uh, a little, I think, close to three months and a little, or a little over. Yeah, the dates, the dates will have to be confirmed from the office. Okay, but. I saw you when they brought you here. Okay, yeah. But now I see you more transformed. Thank you. I don't know whether you've noticed that. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. At a point when I come here and I see you, you were kind of aggressive, like you were all over. Hmm. That is why I decided not to talk to you till today. Okay. Now you are, you are, you are, you are, you are transformed. I don't know what happened. What happened? <laughs> I'll give glory to God first. The same God who has been with me through this whole journey. The same God that created all of us. The same God, Yeshua HaMashiach Emmanuel. The same God, Jesus Christ. Yes. And, and then credits to Apostle Kobe Washington for sure. Yeah, Kobe Washington. <laughs> for sure. All other leaders in choosing rehab center, yeah. I've been very... I happy. see some scouts. Were you fighting... I don't know what happened to you. Your head. Ah, uh, this and that. Yes. This and that, and maybe some other scars. I I think I've grown up embracing scars from childhood. So, well, these two happened here. I don't think it's worth it talking about. But since you asked, uh, this was from the gym. I was I was trying to lift weight, and then I got distracted. So the the the, the bench. The bench for the chest, the bar, it slipped and then it hit, it hit my forehead. Yeah, I, I've I've been a bit slow paced trying to. So after rehab, what do you want to do? Back, to you work. want to go go back to school or work? Back to work. School will definitely come again. You want to go back and work? Yeah, I, I'm actually at work. I, I took a leave to come here. Okay. Yeah, I took a, a clinical leave. Uh, what do you call it? Sick leave. So, I hope they are going to accept you. Oh, yes. Apparently, I was also in that contemplation because the leave was for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I've done three months, so I've been in that contemplation. But my mom visits, oh. and she tells me she's in talks with my HR, my uh, head of department, and she confirms to her that my job is secured. So, I just hope 
It's as my mom is saying. Yeah. So back to work, and then school will definitely come in. I, I just hope you are not going back to anything again. No more drugs. No more drugs. No more hard drugs. No more smokes, too. No That's more drinking. Alcohol, like I said, <laughs> I don't know what to do about alcohol because I've, I've not really had alcohol trouble. I've not really had trouble with alcohol. I, I, I recall two blackouts I've shared with friends here. Those two blackouts, I suspect poisoning. Okay. Yeah. I don't drink. I don't drink till like I can't find my orbit. So. Your your HR is aware you were into drugs. Sorry. I don't know whether you mentioned to your HR that you were into drugs. Yes. They are aware. Just it's marijuana. Hey, yeah, marijuana and cigarettes and alcohol. Yeah. So they are aware. Oh yes. Oh okay. I never heard it from them. They, you don't have any problem with that. They have always showed concern since I've been with them. They have always showed friendly concern, trying to advise me that they are also into it, but they don't do it in the office or say, do it around the office or do it before work time. I should try and limit it to casual time. I try to also tell them because of the culture difference and the culture exposure, I also, uh, we used to balance it, work life, so sometimes it's hard to leave the gun away, but I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn what they are saying now. When should I come for your wedding ceremony? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, man. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good one. That's a very good one. I, I, Have you found someone? Currently, there are two ladies I'm, I'm, I'm praying to settle on one. Two of them? Yeah, just two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you are, you are trying to settle on one or you want to pick two women at the same time oh i, I have this polygamy bizarre man <laughs> <laughs> oh you are from africa so I'll find you. Yes, you. so you want to marry two sometimes i i, I dream <laughs> my mom says no my grandmother says she might allow but maximum of she 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 i, I was trying to get her to it my grandmother you, uh, so like <laughs> you want to you want to use two people to start and then i was i was hoping for 20 actually when, when 20, 20 women that honestly that was what i was going you want for. to marry 20 women yeah if, that was that was that was that was so now how many do you want uh, to we'll probably come down to two or four two or four are you serious about that maybe my mom will still stick me to one my mom will <laughs> let me i don't know <laughs> uh, yeah Okay, so thank you for talking to us. Thank you so much. And Brian. finally, when you reconcile with your employers and the family, we'll come back and talk to you once again. Amen. I, I don't know. People are watching. I don't know what you want to tell people who are into marijuana and all those things. Um, marijuana per se, I would keep telling people, for me, carcinogens won't help anybody. I don't know who carcinogens saved. So as I've advised myself to stay away from smokes, if you believe smokes are helping you, that's you. But I think smokes can't help nobody. So I'm working towards it. And I believe when I live here, I shouldn't touch no smokes from whichever direction. Um, hard drugs is a big no-no. If I tell you what I lost from crystal meth coming into my life, I, I, I don't know. That, that, it, may, it may not be substantial to you, but it is to me. Losing my dual MBA or master's program, MBA stroke, MSIB, I mean, one certificate from Canada, the second one from UK, I lost it. I lost my vehicle. I lost ladies who could have been my wives. I mean, what, what can I say? I don't think hard drugs is, a, is, 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 is necessary for anyone. Alcohol and all other narcotics should be, should be you know, thought about with, a, 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 I mean, a smart, a smart uh, binoculars. You, there should be a way to look at these things and make the right judgment and the right judgment call right decision don't lose yourself stay focused to your dreams know who you are with don't allow drugs to take you choosing rehab is always there for you if you find yourself in the need of rehabilitation i have been